Well, thank you everybody for giving me the opportunity to give you this lecture today, very brief lecture about do I, how do I do my chess wall blocks, uh, taking into account that it's about PEX blocks and serratus plane blocks. So before I start, uh, just to a brief definition, the original definition that I made about what these blocks are. And these are easy, reliable, superficial blocks aiming to block the hemithorax for procedures of any kind and to be designed as an alternative to epidural, thoracic epidural, so paravertebral blocks. Um, it was very clear on this original slide that I pulled out from previous presentations that the name we was trying to involve multiple nerves rather than one, and therefore we found inaccurate to refer to one single one. In this brief um, anatomical description, you can see that the aim of these blocks are concentrated not in different parts of the spinal nerve um, itself, but on the anterolateral side of the chest wall. And you can see here by magnifies, what I refer to here is just to this area because we have muscular landmarks and we have nests going across this part of the hemithorax. So the top circle will correspond with the pex blocks and the lower red circle will correspond with the target zone for the serratus plane block. Now, very briefly, put you into the picture, into the context of what it was this about. Everything started when I was reading old papers like this one from general surgeons, plexus surgeons, in which we were showing my targets and my references to what the pectoral nerves were and what they were. And in this paper, um, it was highlighted there was a, a vascular referral called acromiotorotic artery. This is how everything started. The second paper that um, started to help me to build this up, it was this about how surgeons were concerned about the intercostal nerve number four because if they were transactioning this nerve, the nipple of the patient will be numb. I will not have any sensation anymore. And what I wanted to do is to take as an advantage the same concept because I wanted to anesthetize the periareolar area. So this puts into the picture that the, the target that I wanted to achieve was between four and fifth, the fourth and the fifth three. And finally, number three, you can see this third paper in which you could see uh, that the nerve itself is not like a single nerve, that is a nerve that it branches in multiple ways and in multiple branching off multiple times. And this was coming into my um, account when, when I was doing these blocks and I could see that there was something what I call the cone coin song. That means just in the middle, lower clavicular area, there was also an area that was not covered by this block. And as you can see here, it really corresponds with this branching of the nerve in that area and uh, um, how it's branching out there. So the uh, concept is that it's not just a nerve, it's not just two nerves, it's multiple nerves. Therefore, a facial plane block is what it's indicated. Going into what the types are, you can have the three um, main blocks I'm going to describe you here, PEX1, PEX2, and SPV, that stands for serratus plane block. And here you can see the transition from upper uh, middle of the thorax towards the axilla, towards the lateral side going down in the ribs towards the axilla. Because what we're aiming for, the, for the design of this block, um, to cover that axillary area and that lateral, upper, and lower quadrants that are mostly involved in breast surgery. In here, you can see uh, quite uh, the reference of what I was talking to you before. Uh, the pectoral bracket, so the acromiotorathic artery with a red circle on the left-hand side. And you can see that is the facial plane in between the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. If you follow it to the right, towards the axilla, you can see that is the name, uh, step one of my target. You know, building up the local anesthetic in that plane, that is what is supposed to be um, the first part of these blocks. Also, you can see down there that the serratus plane block is hardly seen in the anterior part of the chest wall because it's very, very thin. If you want to do that, you need to move a little bit more posterior lateral, and that would explain why this transition with the blocks. So this is a step one for the um, space in between the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor, but also the superficial part of the pectoralis minor, if you want to uh, describe it in a different way. Now, the second part, will be under the pectoralis minor, 
And the main aim of this, this design was not to harm, because these are original blocks, and um, you didn't have any disasters at the beginning. So by no harming, I meant that, that your path um, the direction of your needle was always going to go towards the rib so you can have a stop and you will not do any, any damage on the pleura because you can see on both sides on the rib. So this is when your needle was locking down there against the bone or the periosteum, then you will infiltrate your second level on the injection. By doing so, the plane uh, will infiltrate, the, inf the local aesthetic will infiltrate the plane, hydro dissecting it towards the axilla entering the axillary compartment. So if you're at that plane, you will get into the axilla. As it is confirmed, and this study is from France, in which by reaching that point between three, four, and five on the lateral side of the hemithorax, you will get very nicely with your methylene blue into this axillary cross and just um, soaking a huge amount of nerve that for sure will have some beneficial effect on the hemithorax analgesia or anesthesia. You can see here more or less how it covers up everything. If you move a little bit more lateral with the sonograms, you can see that on the lateral edge of the pectoralis minor and peritoralis minor, you will get to a point in which this rated muscle is getting bigger and bigger, it's getting thicker. And even you look, move a bit more even towards the lateral side, you can see that there's another uh, muscle coming to your attention that is the teres major. And that will be the original description of what is the serratus plane block because we were trying to achieve um, easy landmarks for you to do your blocks. In this case, there was an, a front door to the axillary compartment and a uh, back door to the axillary compartment that corresponds to the SPV. And you can see here that in the back door of the axillary compartment block, it, between the latissimus dorsal and the serratus anterior, it is very easy to that hydro dissect that plane with all those narrows run with a beneficial effect that is posteriorly described very well in many articles. You can see here, that's one injection there, very easily hydro dissect the plane. Just focus on the tip of the needle and how it blows up that facial plane in the middle. The results of this is uh, obviously um, a good spread of local anesthetic covering multiple uh, lateral intercostal nerves, as you can see here. And for sure, with this kind of uh, sensory mapping and the easiness of doing this block, there were some beneficial um, indications that will be used in, in the future after the description of this block. Now, my pearls to finalize with this short communication about these blocks. If I want to do something, I will always choose an 85 millimeters uh, needle, echogenic needle, block needle, but something long enough to let you hydrosect on top of the serratus mu uh, muscle towards the axilla. Number two, what I will do, I will use a very diluted concentration of local anesthetic. As an average, you can start with 0 0.2 mils per kilograms of dilution or 0 0.1 to 5% levobopivacaine or the other local anesthetic of your choice as soon as you don't reach toxic level, uh, toxic concentrations. And finally, um, three more points, always aim lateral border the pectoralis minor. Always aim for that axilla to enter into it and to cover as much of it as possible. Always um, focus that the, your, most of your indications will reach in that area. And finally, dissect the plane about the serratus with all that network of nerves, motor nerves and sensory nerves they're mostly um, allocated. This will be an assumption that is when would you have patients that have been across some radiotherapy, and that what I mean by that in that area is literally they fry the muscle like a steak in a pan. So when this previous radiotherapy, the, the hydrodissection becomes very difficult, difficult because of the scarring tissue. So this is one of the reasons why they may well find it much easier at, at that point too to hydrodissect at a different level. So final thought, final seconds, whatever you do, think about your patients and always block. Thank you very much.